Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. F. Scott Field, and I've got with me today a very exciting guest, um, Dr. Marcy Crouch. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on and tell us a little bit about your experience, uh, especially with regards to your recent TED Talk. Congratulations. I can't Thanks. wait. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your educational journey and how it's led you to where you're at today. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much for having me. I love talking about my work and I love talking about vaginas. And so, you know, it's like, who doesn't, who right, doesn't, right? right? Yeah, let's do that. So yeah, I, I think I've had a little bit of kind of a, of an unconventional journey, I would say. So I started PT school, um, at USC in Los Angeles a million years ago in 2007. Same, same. I was yeah, uh, like, before oh that, my God, I'm back like, when the dinosaurs roamed. Oh, when we had PowerPoint <laughs> and like yeah. paper, like actual yeah. paper. Yeah. Like I was still a master's paper. program. So I, I know where you're oh, coming from. Oh God. Yeah. And it's like you used a pen to write, yeah. not like type. Yeah. So, um, I had, I went to undergrad in San Diego and I had been, um, working in San Diego as an aide in an orthopedic clinic that also did a little bit of um, aquatic therapy, cardiac. So I had a, like kind of a good understanding of, you know, a, of the ortho outpatient world. And I had applied to PT school. I got in and I was like, okay, I'm here now. <laughs> like, like, what do we, like, what do we do? And I, I mean, to be completely honest, I was like a little burned out at that time. And I was feeling a little like, hmm, I don't know if this is like really what I want to do. You know, there's like four patients an hour and insurance and all this crap. And like, I don't know, you know, I'm spending a lot of money and like, this is, this is a lot. And at the time, my husband, we had just gotten married right before grad school started, was working still in San Diego. So we were living in San Diego and I was taking the train to USC from North County. And so it's like a two hour train ride. First year we have a seven o'clock class. So I'd get on the four o'clock train, 420 train leaving Oceanside. I'd get to downtown LA by 630. I'd take the shuttle over. I'd be in class all day. And we all know that the first semester of PT school is like the worst, the worst the absolute worst. Ugh. And like, I didn't have a car. So I had to like carry all of my big old heavy books. Like pathology mm. was like, so my back, it was just like a total yeah. mess. And then I'd get on the seven o'clock train to go home and I'd get home at nine o'clock and then I'd like pack a lunch and do it all over again. And it was really hard. <laughs> and I cried a lot. I cried like every single day. I'm like, Oh, this is the worst ever. What am I doing? And then, um, it was our first anatomy class in our first semester. And Dr. Susan Sigward, who I'll never forget. And every time I see her, we talk about this and we laugh about it. And she texts me about it. She was covering the anatomy of the pelvis and the spine. And that was kind of at the, the end of our first gross anatomy. And she brought up on the projector, a picture of the pelvic floor. And she used an example of a woman who had a very significant tear during childbirth. And she just kind of casually said, you know, these are the muscles. This is where like a tear could be. And there are physical therapists that work in this area. And I wasn't having kids yet. None of my friends were having kids yet. I'm 25. And I remember that day, like it was yesterday. I, my mouth opened. I remember where I was sitting. I remember what I was wearing. I remember how cold it was in that dungeon of a classroom. And I remember looking at that picture and thinking in my head, okay, wait, you tear, like, what are you tearing? Like, what is that? What is tearing? And it just completely like blew my mind. And from that moment on, I was like, this is what I'm doing. 100% screw sprained ankles. No offense to sprained ankle people out there, but like, I do not want to treat a sprained ankle. I want to treat vagina. Like this was like what I wanted to do. So I got very involved in the student SIG with the APTA at the time it was called the section on women's health. Now it's called the Academy of pelvic health, very involved as a student on the SIG. I spoke at CSM. I did a lot of research on my own at the time. They didn't have any pelvic floor stuff in the curriculum. So everything that I was doing was kind of on the side and 
I found some clinicals that did pelvic floor PT in addition to ortho and I had to find them. I mean, Michael Simpson, who I love and is like, we're very close now. He was in charge of clinical education at the time. And he was like, Mars, we don't have any pelvic floor clinics. And I was like, I will find one. And I did, I found one in Pasadena and at the time third year students, cause now we're in our, our third year weren't, um, allowed to take the level one pelvic floor class that was offered by the APTA. And so I go into this clinical and it's like my whole semester long clinical third year. And my CI was like, I'm going to teach it to you. And she's like, and you're going to do it on me until I feel that you're like competent to do like a very basic, like vanilla stress incontinence, whatever. And I was like, okay. And I did. And I saw a lot of like orthopedic back pain and pregnancy SI dysfunction that I felt like pretty comfortable with. And then she, I worked on her for weeks until she felt that I was like safe and competent and could do it. And then she's, I started seeing patients and I was like, all right, here we go. And I, I loved it. And then we graduated and I started residency at Baylor in Dallas, um, women's health clinical residency there. I was the first resident. So I was a part of their accreditation program. And then I sat for the WCS and then I started working. Never looked back. A billion years ago. (laughs) Uh, I love it. I love how you found your thing like that immediately and that clear, like radical clarity, just knew it. I was an English major going into Mm -hmm. PT school. So I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I just assumed I loved sports. I was going to be a sports ortho PT and I was going to be the New York Mets physical therapist for the rest of my life. Yeah. And uh, now I specialize in geriatrics. So there you go. Right. I mean, (laughs) yeah, it just, it's wild. Right. But I'm, I'm, I'm really, really interested in, in how you came to that, like, you know, that mind blowing day where it just Mm -hmm. hits you, you know, because not a lot of people get that. And sometimes it takes some time to figure it out and that's okay. That's one of the cool things about physical therapy is that there's so many options, right? You don't like one, try another. Don't like that one, try another, you know? Yeah, totally. And I think what's really interesting about it too, is that like, it's, it still is kind of, you know, a little foreign, not as much as it was 13 years ago, but, but back then it was very foreign. And I remember always being like, well, what about sex? You know, we're talking about ADLs, right. And we're talking about, I'm like, well, what about somebody that can't put a tampon in? You know, like all the, and I just remember my classmates being like, oh God, like yeah, Mary, this girl again, Marcy again, but you know, <laughs> there's always one, right? Yeah. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, God, I think it was me. But I, I just was very much like thought and still think that this is so imperative yeah, and affects so many people. And those people are responsible for bringing in all the people right of, you know so it's like the world yeah the population yeah, like why aren't we right and then I, and then i was like okay we're physical therapists and we're really doing like a disservice here because yeah. we're the best people to be there we're we're the best people to be in that area and like as pts we're not even thinking about it the way that we're thinking about an acl or a rotator cuff or whatever and i'm like how is that even like what is happening even within our profession? Yeah. There's a couple big takeaways there for me. I mean, one, you went out and got it. Like you went out, sought out the things, took the above and beyond steps to like seek out your path and make it happen. And I love that because not enough students are doing that. Not enough students are taking the initiative to like go after your thing, whatever you want to do. If you're that passionate about it, you can find ways. There's ways. You just got to want it and, and literally seek it out. Right. Even well, you know, we can talk about business for days too, but if it doesn't exist yet, create it, right. Right. Will it to be, find a way, become the thing, right. There's, there's a million different ways to get to the end game. You just got to keep poking around till you find one. Right. And you, you bring up another good point too, in that, I've always been a huge fan of the fourth trimester. I feel like the U.S. Mm-hmm. is like way behind in in that yeah. in general. Like yeah. the things that you women go through is just nuts to me. I just, I cannot fathom 
I know. And so uh, all the support, all the things. I personally am not great with pelvic floor stuff, but I know a ton of people that are, so I can send yeah. them on out, right? I don't yeah, have to be. I just yeah. have to know the person to go to, right? And yep. even men, pelvic floor stuff, right? Yeah. We've seen a lot with incontinence, with um, sexual dysfunction, um, totally. uh, neuralgia types, of, like tons of things happen in the pelvic floor. And if you yeah. can be a person that can be an answer or solution, you're going to go a long way, right? For you're sure. going to help a lot of people. Yeah, for sure. And I saw a lot of men early on in my career, like tons and tons of men. I worked in the Bay Area and we had a lot of like high level, intelligent software guys who sat all the time. And cycling was really big, both in the Bay Area where I lived in, where I lived and in Portland, Oregon, where I lived. And so we had a lot of like cycling type injuries and nerve damage. And Mm -hmm. there's so many things there. And it's funny because people are like, oh my God, I don't know how you like put your finger in people's buttholes all day. And I, and then I'm thinking like, you're an inpatient. I'm like, I don't know how you're like cleaning out vomit all day. Like it's just just like your own thing. Like to me, it's like parts or parts or parts. And they're like, oh yeah, I don't care if like my patient, you know, poops in the bed. And I'm like, I don't care if my patient poops on my hands. Like who cares? Yeah. I mean, I've got a a buddy of mine who's got a thriving cash pay practice up in Virginia, seeing only male truck drivers, Oh, pelvic floor therapist. And all he sees is male uh, truck drivers because they've got so many issues from sitting all day, driving, vibration, the whole, you know, uh, you know, dietary drink stuff, holding in, you know, so they can drive. It's not, it makes sense. It makes sense. Right. So Obviously, we love education here, right? We love educating the masses. We love educating patients. We love educating students. We love educating professors, right? We're all about the transfer of knowledge here. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of today. You were recently able to give a TED Talk, Mm -hmm. and that is a level of education that I really want to break down a little bit because we've never had anybody on to talk about that process. So walk Mm -hmm. us through what that Mm -hmm. experience was like. Yeah. Um, it was always a goal of mine. I, I feel that, um, as physical therapists, we are kind of uniquely positioned to discuss these types of topics in a way that is a little different from kind of general (laughs) medical knowledge, right? Like PT isn't really as well known as surgery. Right. So like, I feel like it, I really like doing it and Um, it was something that I kind of always wanted to do. So I spoke at, um, Ted X in Tulsa, university of Tulsa. So Ted X is a independently run, um, kind of branch off of Ted. So Ted is like the overall licensing and then, um, different places will run different Ted X events. Um, and so you have to apply to them or you have to be nominated as a speaker. And generally there's Um, an interview process, you have to submit an outline of your talk. And then once you get approved, um, I believe I had two interviews for Tulsa plus like my speaker pitch, my bio, um, and then like outline kind of of the first talk that was all in the approval process. And then once I got approved to speak, then they assign you a curator or a coach. And so then you're working with your coach kind of within your own schedule to, really fine tune your speech and try to get your message across in a way that's under the time limit, time limit. So it's 18 minutes <laughs> max. Um, and you have to memorize it. So no cards. I had slides, but they were pictures. Um, there's no teleprompter, nothing like that. Um, and then your curator and your coach helps you really kind of boil down to the, like you say, the meat and potatoes of your talk And you want to, Ted wants unique ideas that inspire change. And so you have to present something that has not been spoken about in the way that you're going to speak about it. Um, There's a lot on Ted about motherhood and maternal health and kind of all these things, but there really isn't a lot about what we do as PTs. And the focus of that particular talk was to change the way that we're actually approaching pelvic floor dysfunction and birth and looking at it more from a preventative lens than a reactive treatment. Um, so further up the chain kind of thing. Correct. And starting before there's even problems 
there. So like there were three kind of main points for my talk. One was that it's dangerous to keep this taboo because just of the sheer numbers of women that are affected by it and birthing persons that are affected by it. Second is that we need to be thinking about birth and the pelvic floor and pregnancy as an athletic event and apply what we know about the body and the musculoskeletal system, motor control, motor learning principles, neuro rehab, progressive resistant exercise to birth and pregnancy with the same goals that we have for like preventing ACL injuries and in female athletes, like exactly the same. Like the ramifications of each injury are pretty bad, right? And so like, why aren't we doing that for moms? Like, why do we think that soccer is more important than moms? And like, I am not even talking about C-sections. That's like a whole nother situation. This is just like vaginal delivery. Um, and then the third point was, was equating common and normal and how we need to stop thinking that these dysfunctions are normal because they are so common and kind of looking at the statistics that support how detrimental pelvic floor dysfunction is to a woman's life, not just from a physical standpoint, but psychological, social, mental, and really saying like, well, shit, that's not normal, but that's not happening. Um, so those were kind of the three main points. So, so my coach helped me with that. And then, um, then you practice it a bajillion times <laughs> and then it, Tulsa had us come out for rehearsal. So we had two days of rehearsal, um, and then the event and, um, then, you know, you try not to pass out or vomit on the stage and then you're good to go. <laughs> 18 minutes later, all that work is done. Later. Right? Yeah. 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 I'm actually doing another one in October in Montana. So Very another cool. tech. Yeah. So I'm going to kind of piggyback off of this. Can't be the same talk, which is right. fine, but I'm going to yeah. talk a little bit more about like, um, postpartum. Awesome. Awesome. So as far as the whole TEDx process goes and the Ted talk, like what, what surprised you about it? What, I mean, you, you said a goal like, Hey, I want to do this. And then, mm -hmm. and then what? It was really hard to get in. <laughs> <laughs> we, All right. Yeah. We had applied to many different, I think we sent out maybe like 20 or 30 applications. I got accepted to three. Mm. Um, and I, I being biased is like, oh, how come right. we weren't, how come I didn't like, nobody wants to hear about vaginas. Like what? Right. The but I think there's a couple of things to think about one, like what are the other talks? that are, um, applying for the same TEDx and mm -hmm. each TEDx has a theme. So like your talk, your idea has to kind of like fit That's underneath it. that theme. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, um, I don't even remember what Tulsa's theme was. <laughs> I think I just like blocked it out of my head, yeah. but Billings where I'm going in October in Montana is, um, like the future, I think their theme is something along the lines of like the future starts today. So like you have to kind of position your talk and your pitch and your outline to feed into whatever theme that is um, to make it cohesive. Gotcha. So did you have your talk kind of already in mind and then you made it fit the theme? You yeah, kind of mold great... it? Yeah, that's a great question. I had kind of like the main points and then per each application and per each theme, I like molded it a little bit to gotcha. fit the needs of that particular conference. And some of them was just like weren't a fit. You know, some yeah. of them were like, we're talking about tech or right. we're talking about, you know, whatever. Now I feel <laughs> that I could try to, I could be like, well, this is tech because like now we're online and all these things, right. but like, it's not up to me, you know? Right. So it's fine. But, um, but yeah, you have to, it's just like your personal statement when you're applying to PT school, right? Like you have to kind of sculpt your story to, um, reflect what you're trying to, um, you know, show in the, whatever questions are asking or prompts or whatever. Yeah. So, uh, the cool thing about Ted talks is, you know, they're, they're seen by many, right? Like you've got an audience there and they see it for mm -hmm. sure, but then it usually gets disseminated out to right. many, many, many more. Right. So tell yep. us a little bit about that. And like, 
did you feel any sort of like extra pressure and responsibility about that? Did you, were you excited about that opportunity? Like, tell us about, you know, cause again, yeah. our goal is to, is to educate, educate. the masses. Right. So, yeah. so tell us about like how you felt about that. Yeah. Um, so I had, I was very nervous and I was more so nervous because I felt an overwhelming and I think rightfully so responsibility to do justice for the women that I have treated and to really honor them and their story and tell it in a way that does inspire change and does get people to think like, Oh shit, that's like, that's messed up, you know, like why? And so I wanted to do this talk and have it out there um, for them. And I wanted to be able to do them right, you know, do right by them. And that's what made me nervous. Not necessarily like, oh, there's 200 people in the audience and like, oh, it's going to be on YouTube or whatever, or the TED talk, like, fine. You know, this is an obligation and you got to deliver. Yeah. And I wanted like those women who I have seen or future women that had like similar stories to be like, this is me. Like, and I understand this and like, I've been here and, and she's speaking to me. And that's what, that was what I wanted to accomplish with that speech. So hopefully I did. (laughs) I cried after so we'll see but <laughs> well there you go so i mean that's the interesting thing about ted talks right it's a one-way speech delivery where you're delivering the talk to the audience into a, a mm-hmm. camera right mm-hmm. but it's meant to be like conversational correct in that you're just like talking to somebody yeah. about your expertise right yeah. and then your knowledge and so yeah. You know, yeah. it, it, it's, it's tough to do in 18 minutes, you know, it, it's a lot it of time like to fill, that. but it also yeah. flies, right? It's yeah, like it a weird dichotomy. So it does. And I tend to talk really fast. And yeah, well, so I hear you. I'm thought, from New York. So I, I yeah, it's like, a little. so I like my, all of my rehearsals were like 12, 15 minutes. And then the day of was like 18 minutes, 45 seconds. Yeah. Like I went slower yeah. because I was like trying to just like, get my heart rate down and like be intentional and like be like okay this is power like I this needs to be powerful and there needs to be like clear because sometimes I talk so fast that I kind of jumble my words and I'm like Mm -hmm. I don't want it like we have to make this understood you know so yeah it 18 minutes is it's wild it's a weird it's a crazy number yeah so what tips, tricks, pointers would you give? What kind of takeaways do you have for people that, uh, you know, want to go and do a TED talk? What, mm-hmm. what would you say to them? What, what what do you have? What advice do you have to offer? Yeah. I mean, go for it. I mean, you Wayne Gretzky, right? You take, yeah. you miss a hundred percent of the shots that you don't take. So I think, you, you know, like understand that no will happen yeah. and all you need is one yes. And you just keep doing it. Like we applied for two years and I was like, I am not, not doing this, whether I'm 80, you know, I was like, I don't care. Like, this is a goal and this is important. And I think it's very relevant. And so like, get your idea, put your unique spin on it because nobody is you, like you are who you are and you can tell that story in a way that nobody else can. And deliver it in a way that isn't about you as a clinician, right? Like if this is about the people that we took an oath to treat and do better by, and that will guide you. I mean, I had a patient, I was like treating her right before I left. I took two weeks off before the talk to, you know, finish practicing. And I was like, I'm really nervous. And she's like, Marcy, she's like, you're going to be fine. And she's like, even if you forget something, it doesn't matter. She's like, take every single energy of every single person that you ever treated. And like, we are all in the room with you. And that's who you talk to. Like, talk to me in the audience. And I was like, okay. And she was right. And like, you just think about that and let that intention drive you. And you'll, if you help one person, then it's successful. Absolutely. I love that takeaway. 
Well, Marcy, thank you so much for for taking your time and and letting us know about your experience in in TED yeah. Talk. I love that you're you know taking physical therapy to a much higher level and and getting it out there to the masses because I think advocacy becomes so important for us and ourselves and our profession, but also for our patients. You know, yeah. um, we we ask all of our guests this one final whopper of a question here. Okay. If you could change one aspect of higher education, whether it be DPT or otherwise, what mm. aspect would you change and how would you change it? I think I would add in a little bit more into like the business side of things. <laughs> Amen, sister. Our, I, our I teach the business and admin course, so I hear yeah. you. I'm all for it. I've for been our clinicians, beating that drum for years. Yeah, and I think we need to teach some more skills on, like, knowing your worth and contract negotiation yes. and salary, and like, really have like kind of like a realistic expectation from a financial standpoint, and like, what does it mean when you have to forgive student loans, and and like, what can you expect this this way, and and also like one piece. And then the second piece of that is like the quote unquote marketing um, and really shifting the mindset of like, you're not going to doctor's offices as yeah. a farm rep. You're going as an expert that's going to teach them something. So instead of bringing lunch, like do grand rounds and like hold them accountable like they would hold you accountable and like how to talk to uh, your colleagues in a way that puts you at the table instead of being like, oh, I'm just like a lowly PT, like my whole business, you know, it depends on like you sending me your patients. And it's like, no, I am an expert here and I am a resource for you and like take it or leave it. Yeah. Ooh, that is heavy. That is yeah. packed mm -hmm. and loaded because again, we, if we don't start doing these things, right, we're not going to have a seat at the table. And I've interviewed mm -hmm. people that were PTs, that were CEOs of hospitals, that were, you know, successful mm -hmm. business owners that were, you know, that, that took the, the steps to say, hey, I'm going to make myself the best version of myself I can be. I'm going to yep. become an expert in authority. And because yep. of that experience, I'm kicking down the door and I'm going right up to you and saying, here's what I know. Here's how I can help. How can I help you? 100%. Right? Yep. You know, and, and we need that because if you think about our history, right, where PT came from, we were really, it was like nurses who were mm -hmm. helping injured folks get back after the war. And mm -hmm. they were taking, nurses were taking orders from doctors. Yeah. Then that evolved into PT where we were still taking orders from doctors, right? So exactly. it came, came down and things have changed mm -hmm. pretty dramatically, right? And so- mm -hmm. We still, it comes back to advocacy and standing up for ourselves and, and being that, that voice, you know? It does. And it takes time and confidence. You know, yeah. like I was very much like, Oh, like the big, like, especially as a new grad, like, Oh, the big doctor, like, I don't know, like whatever you say. And I was having this conversation yesterday with this physician that I work with. She's an OB here. And I called her about two patients and I was like, Hey, I think, you know, this patient I saw yesterday, I think she has a yeast infection. And she's like, okay, I'll send over some diflucan. I'm like, okay, do you need to see her? She's like, no, no, no. If you think it's a yeast infection, like, that's great. And yeah. I was like, okay. I'm like, oh, we also need lidocaine. She's like, okay, what do you want? Gel or cream? And I was like, great. Yes. And like, just sent it, you know? And then the other one, I was like, Hey, I had this postpartum patient. You just saw her. You told her to come back in eight weeks. That's totally fine. What do you think about like seeing her earlier? She's like, well, when do you want me to see her? And I was like, I don't know, six weeks. She's like, okay, I'll schedule it right now. And I'm like, great. And so it's like, now we have this, like, yeah, that's how it should be. Like, right. it shouldn't be like, oh, I'm scared to talk to this doctor about what I am an expert in because I don't want their ego to get hurt. And like this physician has like zero ego and she's just like, oh my God, I'm so glad you're here. And I'm like, I'm yeah. so glad you're here. Right. And it's just like, it's this shift in mindset, but I get it. It's hard. I've also been doing this for a long time. So right. like I can speak a little bit more confidently than I did when I was in residency. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But the, the, the business acumen, the financial literacy, that all leads into good communication skills and being able to, to show our worth and our value and our expertise. So, 100%. you know, I, I love that. I love that takeaway. Well, yeah. Marcy, where can people find you if they want to follow up with you or just see what yeah. you're up to these oh. days? Yep. We hang out mostly on Instagram. So we're um, the down there doc is the company name. We're on Instagram. We're on TikTok. 
tic tac see i'm old we're on tick tock um we're working on building up our linkedin i know i know i know i need to do that and then um our website is the down there doc.com. And then I also have Marcy crouch.com. So just reach out. We're here. Awesome. We'll put all those links in the show notes. So it's easy for everyone to find you again, Dr. Marcy crouch. Thank you so much for taking the time. I really enjoyed talking with you today. Yeah. Thank you.